Yes, we are in Melbourne. Back chat's in Melbourne. G'day, hello, welcome. We've got a you know an absolute esteemed footballer sitting with us, but we do want to get and thank our sponsors. Uh, we want to thank Whippersnapper, Bluebet, Margaret River Roasting Co., Shelter, and of course, Leadable Cameras for all of your support. Yes, it's a long list, Ruffy. Uh, you know where to find us, socials, backchat, double underscore, hello at backchatpodcast.com.au if you want to send us something. Jeez, he's impressed this man. Backchatpodcast.com.au to find everything, to listen, to watch. We do it all. Jared Ruffhead is, Jared Ruffhead is in the house. Yes. Mm. Hello, and that's, mate. that's actually all we have time for. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> and go. It's a pretty impressive uh, sponsors list already. Yeah, just rolling around. Nice WA-based uh, stuff. We've right. got, a, got a, a, a couple of little presents for you a bit later on okay. on that. So you're going to be happy with our sponsors list too. <laughs> um, we've got some merch for you as well. Fantastic. So if you want to find your merch, backchatpodcast.com.au <laughs> forward slash merch. <laughs> now, all right, done, dusted. Straight into it. First question yes. we ask every guest, and we appreciate your time tonight, this evening here in Melbourne. We know what you've done on the football field. We're not great with introductions, but we do know what you've done. You've been a four-time premiership player. You've been All-Australian. You've captained the club. You've won a, norm, uh, you've won a Coleman medal. Um, you've pretty much done pretty much anything that's needed to be done on the football field. But we're here to tell you, although we care, but we don't care. No, I know. Right? Yeah, sort of. Good. I've seen some highlights. So Greatest <laughs> sporting moment of all time, not on the football field. Uh, and... This is where this comes into it. There's a yes, <laughs> correct. That is the cricket ball. If you are listening, that is on the table. You cannot use your your year six male netball defeat of Sheppard United in the state championships either. You may not use that as your greatest sporting movement. No, but I didn't do that. grade six, grade five, grade four, year ten. You ten. <laughs> year ten, I did that. Sorry, Mickey Barlow was sure that you played against him. Nah, in year ten. Year ten was the first time I ever played netball. Okay, so that's Mickey might have been a couple of years older than me. Well, he said he said just look in his eyes and see if he's lying about it. Greatest sporting moment on the football field. No, okay, so a cricket one as well. Um, Great. Brother and I in a forty over one day. We made two twenty seven together. He made a golden duck. <laughs> so uh, in forty overs, sixteen sixes, uh, sixteen fours, and nineteen sixes. So you've made two twenty seven in a forty over one day. And your brother has contributed nothing. Uh, so as I went out, I walked. He walked on. I handed back his bat, <laughs> and then the next ball he walked off with both bat. <laughs> <laughs> so two twenty seven. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. C grade, but not out. Ah, uh, no, out. Yeah, yeah. How came in, go, came in at out? three, uh, caught on the boundary. Oh. So uh, it was <laughs> the day after the El Segundo won the Cox Plate. Yes. I reckon this is 07. And had a few the night before, so I was, wasn't seeing them well early. Dusty. But uh, yeah, so 227 in a 40 over one day. Do you reckon Not he could bad. have done that against you? No chance. If you were nah. spinning them down? Oh, you would Daniel? have got caught eventually. I, I was bowling <laughs> leg spinners. Um, and that's how I got five wickets for 16 runs in the grand final, uh, Chewett Hill Cricket Club. Respect. Um, yeah, it was very good. Was on a hat trick. You did ask hat trick ball. Um, no. It's oh, so you framed just a five wicket. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I, you, I did not. Okay, so end of you know trophy presentation, and I got a water trophy. Had no idea it was coming, and the crowds on their feet, yelling, screaming. It was great. How many were in the crowd that day? Do you think? Um, what the trophy presentation or the game? The game. Oh, my dad and probably <laughs> ten other dads. The scorer. <laughs> yeah, the scorer. <laughs> yep. Julie at the canteen. <laughs> All right, let's get into your stuff, mate. That's that's not bad. Two twenty seven. Okay. Well done. Mm, well, that's you. that'll go in there. Josh Dunkley's um, uh, lead role, a uh, lead role in a ballet in Peter school. Pan. In Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Oh yeah, that's quite good. Oh yes. Is that any sport against you? Is that just like any? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll pay oh, it. I, we'll pay yeah. it. No, we'll pay it's, it. it. It's, it's we're very athletic. liberal with our paying of sports. You can yeah. do, you can pretty much get away with anything. But well done. So let's go right back to the start. Gippsland. Yep. Play you play and from Langatha. Mm-hmm. Um, you won a premiership as a junior. No, you didn't. I got dropped. Did you? <laughs> oh, let's talk about that. So well, we played in the prelim. No, no, under, under 16s. Really? Just, I was so this is 2000. So what am I? 13. I didn't get picked. Wow. And two of my best mates. I live in Perth, up in uh, Queens Rock, so north. Yes. Um, one of them got picked and still lets me know about it because I was pretty <laughs> flat. As you can imagine, you think, you know, this yeah. team goes undefeated all year. Um, they got the sponsors' hats for, after, you know, winning the grand final and all this kind of stuff. But no, nah, so I've, yeah, I've only won four premierships and that's none to do with juniors or anything. Just the four. Yeah. So you no, never won a premiership as a junior? No. Nah. So the uh, four you won at AFL level, you were like, the oh, only ones is, I've ever won. This is actually quite good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. So why, why didn't you get picked? You played basketball a bit as a youngster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think, tall, being, you know, when we, we were kids, I'm not sure it was the same with you, but you went from Auskick grade six straight into under 16s. 
So <laughs> wow. there was no 14s or 12s or 8s now. What well, there is. Right. So um, you had to grow up pretty quick because some of these 15, 16 year olds ha- already had beards. They had, and you're jumping in the showers, and you know it's a little bit. Um, intimidating back when you're 12 or 13 years old, yes. not having any idea what to do. So um, I probably wasn't anywhere near as developed as what I am now. Yes. So I just didn't get picked. I was just a little boy. So <laughs> you go on from there, right? And I've got a little story again prepping for this interview. I, it just sprung to my mind. I did uh, work experience at the AFL when I was a 15-year-old. It could have been younger. I was in year nine. I don't know what that means. 14 maybe. And uh, I was working with Terry Wheeler. Yep. Wheelan? Wheeler. 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 Ex-coach of the Bulldogs. And AIS. Yep. Uh, Academy. Yeah. And was he to do with you? Uh, right? Yeah. So I've been there at the <laughs> AFL, you know, pushing papers around, making yep. people's coffee. And Terry Wheeler comes up. He goes, I've got a great job for you. Um, I want you to clip up um, goal kicking routines for our current <laughs> crop. And I just remembered, I've sat there clipping your goal kicking routine. And I spoke about yours. And tell me if I'm wrong. You had like a, a, a little flicky hand. Correct. And you still did through your career. Yep. And I remember seeing the flicky hand. I was like, what is this bloke doing with his hand? <laughs> we yeah. went all right. I mean, you did quite well once you got that. They all, they, funnily, we were talking about this the other day. I thought there's another story that we need to talk about. So remind me later because it involves JK okay. as well from a um, AS oh, got, trip. No, we've got that. You have got that. At the back end, yes. Um, <laughs> Josh has actually written into the podcast <laughs> to remind us about it, actually. So we'll get to that later right. on. Um, so... They tried, Alan Didak was the ideal technique that everyone tried to get you to copy and they used to give us goggles that would, the bottom of the bo- goggles were painted out so you could just drop the ball without seeing it onto your foot and stuff like this. Right. And they'd say, get in front of a mirror and hold your hand out like this so you'd learn how to kick left footed but mine always did this. So <laughs> they tried to change me but then they worked out that everyone's def- technique is different and not all has to be the same. So but they did stuff me for two or three years. <laughs> but well, basically Terry Wheeler who it sounds like he's just tried one of the great forwards of the modern era <laughs> tried to change him around. He told me after I'd clipped up all your goal kicking that's the closest you're going to get to these blokes. That's <laughs> 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 said, said, said it's probably you know, it's a good experience for you closest you'll ever get to these blokes. Little did he know I'd be out in the field getting an absolute bath by <laughs> Rough Ed Franklin in years to come. Don't worry, I could set up from the beginning. So in, in your head, you're like thinking, don't do the flick. Like, are you trying to stop from No, doing well, it? you're trying to get your arm out straight because mine went over my head like this. So in the mirror, like you're trying to get this ideal <laughs> out to the side technique that you see all these midfielders do now. I had no chance. <laughs> you were number two draft pick. It was a pretty decent draft for Hawthorne. <laughs> Rough Ed, Franklin, Lewis. Yep. All top 10 draft picks? Yep. That's, uh, how, how did that... I mean, how that, does that, that happen? Well, it was Hawthorne come out a period of not playing very well, correct? Uh, yeah, so they got... Uh, the three teams got the priority pick that year. So it was Richmond, Bulldogs and Hawthorne. Yeah. Uh, and then they traded... Somehow they had pick 10, but traded it in to Collingwood, I think, and got pick 7, uh, wow. which managed to get Louis. So it was completely different. I thought I was going to Richmond the night before. They gave me a call and said, "You're gonna, we're going to pick it, pick 4 tomorrow. So... No worries, I was happy. We had our school graduation and then, yeah, next day it changed pretty quick. You had your school graduation the night before. <laughs> How good. <laughs> Very good. What'd you wear? Nice suit. Uh, it was an open um, pink shirt with a shell necklace <laughs> 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 and a black jacket over the top. <laughs> Have you still got the shell oh, necklace? Mate, they no, definitely. I wore it to the draft the next day too. <laughs> um, I reckon our first suits were like op shop suits. Like yeah. That's just what it was in the bush. Yeah. Just. You can Go take straight. the boy out of Gibson and you can't take the Gippy out of the boy. <laughs> is that correct? Or what? Yeah, I like mine that. What uh, are they calling the pooks, is it? The shells? Dead man suits. Oh, like the shell necklace. Like oh, gotta, no, sorry. Sounds like your white experience. In the, did you have one? <laughs> no, I didn't. I well, was you, cool you would have the shark tooth. The shark tooth, yeah. Yes, that's yeah, what I had. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the shark tooth. Oh, this is uh, good. I remember sorry, begging my parents for a shark tooth. The shark tooth. I mean, why are we... Anyway. So you drafted, you get to the club, and you're off to Kokoda pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> how, how, how was that? No, it, well, initially it was like, oh, I didn't have a passport. So Bud and I both had to get kids' passports because we were under 18. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, everyone that's been overseas with their kids now have that just moon-faced little kid in their passport photo. Bud and I are like 17, like <laughs> <laughs> doing these ones. <laughs> you get immunisations to go, and within... Um, two weeks we were walking Kokoda with the footy club so it was probably the best initiation for us just to get to know the boys but at the same time we were just it's Kokoda and oh yeah so but we were lucky it didn't rain we walked it in five or six days so it was pretty pretty good is that one and only or did, you, did no, that no, happen they, a few they re, times they redid it every three years but it was whoever hadn't been 
had to go again. So I've only done it once. Yeah, wow. On a, on a trip like that, are you getting a bit of hazing from, from older guys? Uh, are you carrying people's stuff for them? No, no, because we were all carrying packs. It, was, it wasn't as if it was like a footy trip type camp. It was more, yep. yeah, yeah, everyone has to, you know, they chop down trees, you carry the logs, you carry sandbags to replicate what it was like back in the day for the soldiers. So it was quite a learning experience as well for the kids or basically the whole footy club. But um, as years went on, there was like, uh, trips where it would rain and they'd give them a you know two foot shovel and they'd have to dig basically um pits like mm. three foot pits to try and hide in and pretend that there was snipers and stuff like that so it was basically to replicate what it was like back in the day wow i uh yeah uh K- K- kokoda I'd, I'd love to do I was, I was gonna do that with the old man and um ended up getting drafted and it didn't end up getting to happen i never got to do it i just i see um, people do it and it's kind of we've got some family connection to yep. it as well was the whole point of it um, not only bonding I mean you can go and bond down to the pub though yeah. right? like <laughs> yeah, you know, correct. head down and have a couple of beers and bond yeah. what was it the mentality like mindset was that oh yeah and especially with Clarko coming in that was his first real chance to set you know his standards and what he wanted as a culture so for us to go across you know they basically it was it was just you were walking with packs you were carrying these logs you were doing everything to try and understand what it was going to be like moving forward as a footy club and it was going to take not only you know the good players in Crawf and ben dixon and crody and these guys mm. but it was going to take 40 of us because they'd been so poor for so long so the group um that sort of you know you would have gone with that and then probably over the next couple of years ends up being the core nucleus of that young team that wins the 2008 yep. flag, um, what's that period of time like? Because you go on, you go on and win, you know, three premierships a bit later on. But that yeah. that there is like, it's not one that was stolen. I don't think I don't think that actually is a fitting thing. I've heard that before. Yeah, you, you earned it and won it, but yeah. it was maybe before people thought you could do that. Oh, definitely. Like that for how quick it happened. Like we go two years getting belted. You play finals in 2007 make it like Bud kicks those goals against Adelaide mm-hmm. um, 2008 we get on a bit of a run we play the Cats round 15 or 16 we lose on a Friday night um, Hodgie turns a couple of balls over and then he has his first son that week so he was going through a bit of stuff get to the we get to the review the Monday and Clarko walks in and goes we can win the flag boys I was like what's this bloke on you know <laughs> just lost to the best team <laughs> but he sold he sold a story really really well to you know all these kids we're all I was 21 when we won so probably didn't appreciate anywhere near as much as what we did later on because we carried on like little kids do really <laughs> like we came back with an extra person in skin folds body fat wow. um i traveled with Dewey for three weeks throughout london and hong kong so quiet yeah very <laughs> just yep. you know um sites. so then when we got back <laughs> when we got back there was a number of boys that had had surgery too so we were playing catch up from the start so email yeah what was that apologies as a text <laughs> <laughs> or like chronic chronic happens most episodes right. actually yeah. um so yeah but when we got back he just didn't appreciate it so nine 12 months later when we were out of the finals it's just like well yeah you got a reality check there yeah um that that 2008 flag um spoken to xavier ellis on this podcast told a interesting story uh, again probably on the clarkson mindset about um hey we can do this earlier in the year yeah but then um grand final day half time um geelong boats getting in a freezer does that, does that bring any, any in a in a cool room? Zave seemed to think that that was the moment that galvanised the playing list. But we saw them walk into a freezer. Yeah, apparently it wasn't there was even a, hot that, that day. They had a they had a cool room. There was a trainer that came in and he's like, "Boys, all the Geelong players are in a cool room. Like they've just gotten into a truck that's like a, a portable really? fridge." I didn't know that one. No, there no you go. I did not know that one. They must have told. Well, I knew there was, was Zave playing in the midfield. Boys, no, well, Zave midfield was then. injured too because Zave comes out and does. He, he's best on. He probably reminded you. He's best yeah. on until half time, and then oh, he thinks comes he was best on at the end of the game as well. Yeah, well, you got to play the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's calf, and then he's yeah. calf. He did an ankle, didn't he? Yeah, he's well, no, no, but they were jabbing his. He they that. jabbed his calf in twelve. Yes, correct. Yeah, actually, that's when right. When he kicked the first goal. Yeah, that's right. And he was probably best on that game too, wasn't he? That was also the um the rush behinds. Correct, and they changed it. Straight after that game. Yeah. So we had no intention to do that. The boys just, that was how they were able to get away from the Geelong forwards, just kick, rush it through or kick it through. Willow, I reckon Mark Williams kicked one through from 35 at one stage. <laughs> yeah, saves it the same. <laughs> yeah. I reckon if you have a look, he does. <laughs> just running he on the He gets the mark, like leading out for, at full back and yes. then realises they've called play on, so he just boots it straight back through the goal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, is that is that discussed beforehand? Like, is that Not t- at all. Nothing was mentioned. Like you all hear about the shark story, the shark picture on the wall and yep. stuff like that, but there was no talk of um, we're rushing through. What's, What's the, the shark, shark story? story? Yeah, oh, so um, 
So we walk we're in, in Western we, Australia. We walk into the the G rooms and they've got the projector, the old school ones, you know, that you see that... What, Winding it up. No, that you slide the piece of paper yeah. on it, it projects so up onto the, hand yeah. And so then yeah. when you pull it back, it makes it bigger. Yeah. So there's this big, great white shark stenciled on the whiteboard. And the theory was sharks can't swim backwards. So if you keep attacking them front on... They're never ever going to swim backwards, so you can then go past them, and you know, so similar to Geelong with all the pressing and stuff like that. When it came back in, right? That theory, that so was. So you you were hunting the sharks? Uh, well, or were you just swimming? You just like goldfish we're swimming past them, yeah. by, bypassing them. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of goldfish floating around in the pool. Can't go backwards anyway. So let's go past them. Okay, so t- two thousand eight. You you know, by your own admission, don't come back um, in the best nick. Two thousand nine as a yeah. team. Um, two thousand ten, eleven. Uh, Building, but not the success. You know, Clarkson almost gets sacked. Yeah. Right? Like at somewhere there, right? You yep. start poorly in two thousand ten. Yep. And he, he gets talked about as getting the sack, but then he finishes his career as one of the best of all time. <laughs> do you do you reflect on that at all? Yeah. Like, well, Mitch saves Clarko's ass really because he tackles Shane Tuck um, against the Tigers, and I reckon we would have either gone one and six or zip and seven to start the year. And so Kennett was calling for him to be dropped back to Box Hill, and then he was probably going to pull the trigger on the Monday if he if we lost that game. I mean, you can't say it, but the thing that springs to my mind is, you know, Mitch, the transition with Clarkson last year. Well, Clark, I probably owed him one then because he may have, <laughs> may, have, may have actually finished up a lot earlier than he did. So that period there then flows into 2012. Yep. You lose a prelim in 2011. Yep. Um, make the grand final in 2012, but lose. Yep. Um, losing a grand final amongst the winning ones. It was a fair bit of adversity you had to go through as a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People think it was... Probably, you know, yeah. or, or, you know greatest, no. greatest dynasty of all time, blah, blah, blah. You had We've to go through a bit. Lost, lost an elimination to Freo in Perth in 10. Um, I did an Achilles in 11, so I didn't even get to play that back half that, that season. And then 12, yeah, you come back and you think, we're the best team all year, or we play our best footy probably of that era in a 12-week period, and then we're cooked come finals. So, hmm. yeah, it wasn't as if it was all perfect footy. What does doing your Achilles feel like? Uh, I turned around to yell at James Kelly because I thought he was right there, but he was about 15 metres away. So wow. I realised it felt like, you know, when, when you, those Oz kick balls and they split right there and the, it bursts through, you know, when you, f- you see the blubber? Yes. That's what it, that sound. And I was that like, That sound? Oh, that sound of when it just comes through the yeah. stitching. I was like, That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I've heard but people say it feels like someone like kicks you in the back yeah, of the leg. Yeah, but I was only 24, so I was really, really lucky compared to you know guys that, or people that do it when they're 30 plus. When they say it's like a career-ending injury, was recovering from that difficult? Like uh, that, not too bad. Well, I, got, I was a bit. Uh, mine got infected two months in, so I had to re- go back and start again. So right. I was probably I end up doing it. I think round 11 or 12 against the Cats in 11, and then came back and played them for round two the next year. Wow. Well. Okay, so you lose that um, grand final. Is that a lot of people say you got to lose one to win one, right? I mean, know you won one in two thousand eight. Yeah, good call. But um, that group's a bit different by that stage. Yep. Is that a motivator for what proceeds? Uh, what yeah. is after? Yeah, because uh, I don't know if you've heard the story, but the leadership group took a fair bit of responsibility at the, the camp post twelve. It was like, you know, our leadership group at that time was probably do as I say, not as I do. And then when they, someone you know, stood up and said, oh, well, we've heard this all before, so what are you actually going to do about it? So that was a catalyst to pretty much change everything we were going about ourselves. Sticks Loudon? Correct. Is that right? Yep. I've, I've just heard his name come up uh, in a lot of things. <laughs> we I, played one game. It was against I you guys. I know, down at Tassie. Yeah. Played in the rut yep. against Nananui and Cox. And Cox kicks three. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I just hear him. I've mates with sort of some Hawthorne guys, yeah. and I'd hear his name mentioned a lot. I mean, he played one game. But was he an influence? Because well, he, sa- he was the one that got up and said, and it took, you know, a fair bit of courage for him to stand up and say, well, we've heard this before, boys. What are you actually going to do about it? Or why do we have to listen? If you're not going to do it, why do we have to do it? So To the leadership group? To everyone in the footy uh, Well, right. to the leadership group, because we put our hands up. Yeah. But then coaches, administrators, new coaches, every, it was pre-season camp and we'll all bar in the back half of 12. And I reckon that's like, you know, the fork in the ground. It was like, right, we need to change. And... If you ask any Hawthorne person, that'll be the main meeting that changed it. Wow, sticks loud. Yeah, correct. Started a dynasty. <laughs> How good. Yep. So what, what sort of things changed then? Uh, well, the leadership group started challenging themselves um, more and, and probably in a way that, you know, if you played against us, you would think that we disliked each other, whether it be Hodgie talking to me or me talking to Geordie Lewis or even Mitch. The way that we challenged each other showed that we were going to pull each other up versus just having to worry about 
you know, picking on the younger kids and when they were doing something wrong. When we challenged each other, that's when we knew we were going places. Just again, I'm just going to keep bringing these moments up. Just made me think of a moment standing next to you, playing on you, Subiaco Oval. What I mean, Saturday night was a night game and I was talking to my midfielders and I was giving some feedback. Well, it probably wasn't very constructive. It was immediate feedback, mm. as you do on a football field. Mm. Not much time to sit down and have a leadership group meeting Correct. about uh, midfield set up and getting butchered in the midfield and leaving us out to dry as backmen. And I called one of the boys, I, no, I called the midfield group as a collective, a C-U-N-T. Yeah. You remember this? Uh, you pulled I, I me up. Times, you pulled yeah. me up. Just and said, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't talk to the midfield like that. <laughs> and I, I looked at him like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> talk about whatever I want. There's a few times, because you'd say something at the start, it's like, you can't be like this. You, you're no good or something like that. I was like, hold on. <laughs> you just settle down, chief. <laughs> <laughs> you're the full back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and maybe even not, maybe the back pocket, not even the full back. I mean, I was on you, but. Yeah, so it means I'm full <laughs> pocket. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. <laughs> do you remember, do you remember, Moments like that through your I'm, career. Yeah, I'm good with memory of most games and opponents and just chatting. And that was how I got into the game. Were you a chatter? Talk. Yeah, you. you, you, you I know knew you're. That. Sorry, I know, I know you're yeah. a chatter. So yeah, I, and I, I hated it. I, I like to talk. If I could talk to my opponent and just have a little or Friendly. know something, knew something about them, and just try and get them to relax a little bit, I was like, right. So that's what you did it for to to almost bring the guard down. Yeah. Yep. Because I hated it. I like bikes that would be friendly. Because I'm actually a good bloke On the field though yeah. I wasn't a good bloke You know Not while I'm fever But I just wasn't That didn't get me up Being yeah. nice And so when someone was nice Like if I met you off the field I'd have a beer with you Correct. And I would And I'd love it But then you hear him chatting on the field like, Just shut the f- Like shut up Tom, Tom uh, Liberatore did it to me one day we got in a well, see, I'd get in trouble for doing it because Mitch and Louis would pull me up because yeah. they're Mitch opposite, like me, yeah. exactly. And, would, and Louis, one, he'd look at me and go, "Why are you laughing?" <laughs> and I'd be like, Mate. "Like we're best men at each other's wedding." And he'd be like, he'd, "Like there was a game against the Giants, we were just yelling at each other." He said, and then I said, "Just we'll talk about it later." He said, "What'd you say?" And then you've got them looking at you, like the Giants boys looking at you, going, "What the fuck are these two blokes talking about?" <laughs> It's just like, well, that's where you got that. And you know, you've played in a su- successful side. That's what you have to get to yep. at times as well. Yeah, and that's the, uh, the sides that aren't successful that's don't, don't have that. Yeah. Yep. So how do you how do you start that? Other than a, a, a meeting oh, hosted by Luke Loudon, is it time? Is it, how I do you actually It's time and coming through together. Like you look at the core of our group and even your group, a lot of you guys played a lot of footy together. Yeah. And so whether it be you guys in defence, you and Gov, then you've got Lecker and JK, and then you've got that midfield group that play a lot of... Like, you've got people in each line too. And that's what we were lucky with. We had myself in the forward line, Mitch, Hodgie, Louis, and then Gibbo in the defence. You had all areas covered at any given time, which I think's a bonus as and well. And that was the leadership group right there? That was the five right there, hmm. yep. It's funny you saying about um, being nice on the field because uh, we spoke to Griffin Logue, <coughs> excuse me, and... Uh, when he went up to up to Buddy the first time, he said something <laughs> like, um, "Oh, those those boots look pretty good. Like, how how, how are you going, yeah. man?" And just gave him like Joe donuts. Nice. Yeah. And uh, he said to him, "Like, mate, if you want me to get you up on the big screen, I can, but don't talk to me or, <laughs> or something <laughs> like that." But yeah, our dad had some good ones. He was a sled. He was wasn't very he? good. And, he still is. A, it was it was uh, arrogance, but it was it was allowed. Warranted. Because, yeah, warranted <laughs> yeah. arrogance. Uh, correct because. You know, as a defender, you know you're playing on Buddy. He's, you know, the best player in the league. Yep. And so you know that and you've prepared for him probably longer than a week. Like, you know, you see it three weeks in advance. <laughs> you know the draw. And then when you roll in and he's just like, I'm going to kick 10 on you, you're like, that's like genuinely a possibility. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like playing with him? You get drafted in the same oh, year. You live together as loved a young guy. It. Loved it. I mean, you... Are yeah, you Batman like and Robert? Oh, you're know. different blokes and you're different players. Yeah. But oh, well, you can call me that. I don't oh know. no, I'm just asking you. Someone said it. Well, someone someone put it up the other day. So it was like best duo ever. I was like, oh, yeah. that's pretty nice to be considered. Fair, Charlie. Fair. Charlie's a Freo fan. He's, he's stats yeah, I, I reckon that's fair. Okay. Buddy, buddy Charlie, and Ruffin. Charlie's yeah, Charlie. confirmed it. Yeah, see, so that's um, confirmed. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> Look after your ankle, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's broken his ankle. <laughs> um, oh, I mean, nine years to, to say you've played with probably one of the best five players ever in the game. You'd take that any day of the week. So, yeah. Um, yeah, to see what he was able to do in those first nine years and then to see what he's gone, done at Sydney, um, yeah, freak. Did you Amazing. have an understanding on the field? Um, nah. You know, from, from, from a football sense? What do you mean, nah? Nah. Like, it, the, the best thing with him was that his instinct. Yes. So, uh, and then you throw Cyril in the mix 
and it's just like you've you fit in you just you just work because you know that defend defensive units are going to definitely have three of you on each other so you're never going to get free so it's either one of us will get free or someone else in the forward line will get free yes so being able to you know you walk down and then that 15 granny against you guys you've got gunson bruce rioli me oh no but i didn't play on sorry the 13 one yeah 13 so you've got yes. those boys and it's just like any one of them can get hot that day Yes. Out of six. Like, whereas some, now you've got defensive forwards and resting ruckmen and stuff like this. Yeah. Right there, you had five, six genuine forwards so that could, could win five. you a game. Yep. Like, Punky kicked six on the weekend against the Eagles. Yeah. So, he's still doing that at 31. <laughs> yeah, and he's not bad at it. Correct. Um, so, 2013, you win the Colin medal. Yeah. So, after after losing the grand final, the Achilles, losing the grand final, 2013, which yep. is the premiership year, Colin medalist. Does that mean anything? Col- Colin medalist? No, no, no. No, like, well, you don't. I can't have a reunion with anyone. No, <laughs> like <laughs> catch up with the, you, you, you're like an <laughs> Illuminati together. You get together. The oh, it's, it's like it's it's nice. It's yeah. oh, you're very happy, proud of it, but yeah. it's not as if like oh, Bud was won four and I played. He won two <laughs> when I was with him. So it's just like you, yeah, you're, you're lucky. You got good service, really. Yes. Yeah, do, you, do you remember much of the, that last round? Because I was just, I've got Against, here um, uh, Swans cloak. Cloak was on sixty one. You were on sixty four. Yeah, we played the Friday night against the Swans. Yeah. So was four. there a, was there a bit of a, a game plan to get you? No, nah, no, nah, because we had to win. I think to try and finish top, and that was where Bud got suspended for getting Malcheski before um, the first final, which was going to be against Sydney as well. So uh, we needed to win to try and finish top. So there was no. Yeah, we couldn't feed me. Whereas yep. on the on the Sunday when the Pies played, I reckon they were trying to feed Trav. Because he kicked five in the in the yeah. last yeah. two short. Were, they were giving him, <laughs> yeah, joint common. They all still been happy. Yeah. Is it strange that the 13, 14 premiership, uh, 15 premierships, um, and so everyone looks, you know, you're a four time premiership player, but you're almost not favourite going into any of, any of them. them. Yeah, the favourite, one of my favourites is the one we lose. 2012. Yeah. So, true. how does that. Uh, sit because I think people who don't know that is like oh well, they just they had the yeah, best correct. team. Yeah, correct. You 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 are able to be the underdogs and win everyone yep. effectively. Yeah. Which I don't agree with that you were not favourites in fifteen. I mean, well, you beat us the, three weeks before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at, at Optus after a five hour flight. No, wasn't even Optus. Oh, sorry, Subi. That's, that's Subi. Sorry. Uh, I've, I've basically wiped twenty fifteen from my memory. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I'm the same with twelve. Yes. But uh, like yeah, we, we, well thirteen. Yeah, thirteen Freo were known as this pressure side. Swans were the best team. They'd got Bud. And then, yeah, you guys were the best team in 15 leading into finals and had beaten us. And mm. we had to come back and play two more before playing you. So, um, And then the Geelong one, as you said. So, yeah, it was nice, I suppose, because everyone thinks that we're just, we just rolled through three years and didn't lose a game. There's some pretty heavy stories in there as well. Like blokes getting injured and yeah. Clarko getting, and you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Was that like that, how the group was um, motivated? Like, how they actually worked best was like yeah. proving people wrong sort of or you know yeah you and we were like squ- Clark I would always say squads win premierships and you lose a soldier you replace one so as soon as one bloke got injured one bloke came in and the twos won the premiership in 13 and then lost grand finals in 14 15 so it wasn't as if it was just the senior side that was yeah successful the twos were going pretty well as well that's a good point um, you won some all Australians in in there somewhere. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, I just, you just yeah, you on Wikipedia? No, no. <laughs> I'm just I'm going <laughs> to ask you something. Non Wikipedia doesn't cover this. Right. Uh, your blazer. Yeah. Do you have one or do you have multiple? Now, nah, see, I like I know, I know this. No, you. Like, what, so what they do is they take the pocket off. They give you new pockets. Really. And I was the last year in 13 where I got the Virgin Trophy, so I didn't get a blazer in 13. What's the Virgin? What? Trophy? The Virgin. It was the Virgin. Australia All Australian team. Yeah. So yeah. all it was was this trophy that had the All Australian team on it. That's what? it. And they didn't. No so blazer. if you, you go around to Pav's house, or these blokes that have won multiple Australians, I didn't get my blazer until fourteen. So I don't, the blazers only started in fourteen. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm talking about. Don't, Wikipedia doesn't yeah. cover this shit, mate. Like, okay. Like, like, we had to go and get Brad Shepherd's blazer from yeah. AFL House. He he'd been missing one for two years, and Backchat got him his blazer. Respect. Yeah. Correct. So I, I don't care about you winning the All Australian. Oh, I care right. about the the blazer. Yeah. So, so I've got I've got one. So, th- so the, bo- the guys like they don't have one from 13. Like, that's no. outrageous. So, well, so what they do is everyone has one blazer, but every year, so if you're danger, they just rip that pocket off and do a new one with that new year and then put that back on. Wow. Mm. This is, Seems this. cheap. You know, in actual <laughs> fact, speaking of it like it's sounding cheap, the, um, <laughs> when we did get Segway. Shep's blazer delivered, yes. it's like someone at AFL HQ 
just looked around for an archival box and he was like, yeah, chuck it in that and ship it. Like it was literally in this empty, half so empty he archival what, he, box. Is he two time or? Uh, one time. But that year was COVID year so and all the interstaters didn't get flown over for it. But then they just didn't send their right. blazers out. So Daniel Rich doesn't have one. We've seen that pop up on socials. Liam Ryan doesn't have one. But two years after the fact. What are you, what are you signing? I'm just like... Tell me. Do you reckon Shep's ever going to wear it out? No. And I'm, I'm the same. Like, I know what, you, what you're getting at. He didn't ask us to get principle. it. We right. heard that yeah, he didn't. thank you. Yes. Yeah, he, we heard he didn't have it. And I was like, hang on. He didn't want it. Yeah. Well, you know, wants it. But also was like, oh, yeah. well, it just is what it is. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. We're going to get the bottom of this. <laughs> There's no all Australian reunion that you all rock up and go, oh, that's you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if there was, though. <laughs> Good party. Um, Alistair Clarkson. I want to talk about him. Yep. Um... Yeah, I, we've heard some stories along the way. Is, you know, he, he he could fly off the chain a little bit, but from from afar, like an incredibly successful coach. But um, was he a what sort of coach was he? Was he an educator? Was he a motivator? Was he a um, was he a bringing people together sort of guy? Was he a you know game plan probably guy? Probably a mix of everything, really. Yep. Um, you know, he was an innovator when he he travelled overseas, and I reckon he, we used to have a reflex box that would have a hole cut out of it and we'd have a camera just facing our forward line and that's how we would review our patterns and stuff like that. This is early days. So there was no behind the goals before. Behind the goals vision came in in 08 or end of 08. Yeah. So and that's when it mirrored up and that's when teams started really get, you know, Ross Lyon would why just watch. It, why was it in a reflex box? Because you weren't allowed to film other parts of it. So this is, you had to, in your coach's box, so we had to hide the camera in there <laughs> and then film and watch us that way. Wow. You know, it's the same as going to a game and just holding the camera at least. Yes, but you so, weren't allowed to... Correct. That's great. So uh, he'd go to he'd go to England and bring back the soccer defenses and whatnot that we implemented. Um, he was he was different with some of his um, pre-game stuff and whatnot, like dressing up as a. Um, there was one game where Sully, Mitch, and Hodgie didn't play, so it was effectively changing of the guard. So we're playing at um, ANZ Stadium, and he walks in like one of the um, night. Um, Oh. The people on at Buckingham Palace, the guards, like he had the black, like <laughs> the black top hat thing. Yeah, so he'd red gone, coat. Yep, yep. And what is this? What am I? What am I selling here? Did, was everyone? Like, <laughs> like, we're thinking, what? He's had a breakdown. <laughs> like I don't know. Like I don't know, guarding the Queen or like you know. But it, it was changing of the guard of like all these old guys. This is the first time, and he hadn't. Play or coached a team that didn't have anyone that was originally there when he first got there. Right. Like we were drafted, but did he come marching in? <coughs> um, no, he came. Yeah, it was. Have you played ANZ? And you yeah. got the Pullman across the road. So yes. that meeting room, he comes from behind the. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some different stories like that. that. But he He's committed. Yeah, yeah, and you know he learned guitar after he got crook, and he was writing songs about different players to different tunes and <laughs> send recording and sending. No, them. he'd play them in front of us live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, was he good? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> he's a he's mad Bruce Springsteen fan. So, right. like, has driven across America and probably seen him 10 times. And wow. yeah, there was a framed Bruce Springsteen, you know, um, thing in the meeting room at Waverley Park. So, um, but his best trait was able to keep us on edge, no matter what. You know, we'd go out and play a team that we should win by 10, 15 goals, and he'd make sure that, you know, you have to do that. You have to try and scar him for the future and keeping us on edge that we never get ahead of ourselves and whatnot. And, you know, reviews after big wins, we'd feel like we'd lost after we'd walk out because we weren't playing the game the right way or how we were supposed to play. That's what I want to ask next was the motivation element. Like yeah. you're winning a lot of games at that stage and you, you come up against sides that, like you said, you should beat or can yeah. beat quite easily if you play well. Was that driven by him or yeah. was it playing group? Yeah, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, a fair bit of Obviously it was set by him. And then, yeah. But we were like, yeah. So he was, early in the week, he would set the tone and understood that, yeah, this is what needed to happen and it wasn't going to be an easy week. You know, we'd, he'd have a block of three games up on the wall and each week he'd tick one or two off and um, and it was just about mani- wait, waiting to get to top four because if you give, get to top four, you can give yourself a chance. Sounds like Simo was taking notes. Well, yeah, all, a lot of them would have all taken I was going to say, right now though, yeah. there's like this spider web of Clarks yeah. and coaches around. Yeah. Um, it's like Greg Pop- Popovich in the, uh, in the NBA. Yeah. Just yeah. coaches everywhere. Um, did, did he ever, when's he going to take you to the Super Bowl? Uh, don't know. Isn't that, wasn't well, that the All promise? five of us are done, but yeah. Isn't that the promise? Well, there was a promise. So he Which tried to get what? the tickets the next year. So it was, he told us, uh, there was a story, I think he, he, the wives went to New York and he paid for some of it or did something where it was the coach's wives or something back in 13. 
And so 14, we heard about this and got him in and said, well, what if we win as leadership a leadership group. group? He goes, I'll take the Super Bowl. We're like, all right. So we won and we'd been in the meeting room after we won, pulled him into the room straight away and said, you told us we're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Day of? <laughs> like you just won? Yeah, like 10 minutes after. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he tried to get the tickets that year, the next year, but it would have been salary cap. So yes. he said, well, wait till you'll retire. But now it's, you know, there's a fair, there's some... Probably can't come because they'll be coaching and um, yes. some are in the media. Just take him off him singularly. Just uh, just give us a Super Bowl ticket. I'll sort it out. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Just send him in. Well, the next couple of years are all right because you've got Arizona and then Vegas. So Okay. Maybe Vegas is the one maybe. Quiet as well. <laughs> what about keeping the group together then? Like, What about keeping all these players together through yeah. a successful period? You see a lot of teams um, yeah, maybe get split up. Well, they don't win as much as you guys, but Temptation must, must have been there to yep. be traded or to, I don't know, go to other clubs or... Ask for more money from your club. Do, do blokes get paid less? Um, yeah, we, we had a chat. I reckon it was halfway through six or seven. It was like, you take less and stay together, you'll get looked after post-footy. And so that, in theory, it's, oh, yeah, we'll do that. But when you see everyone signing and no one leaving, it was like, well, and we're on a good wicket. And, it, you know, to leave back in the day, the salary cap is nowhere near what it was and blokes weren't getting money like they are now. So, yeah. Um, to leave for a hundred grand, it's fifty, and you got to move into state or you got to go somewhere else. It's just like I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in where I was and whatnot. So um, we were lucky, and then we were able to add too. You bring Lakey in, you bring Gibbo in, you bring Chip Frawley in, um, McAvoy. After this is obviously after Bud leaves, you get a few of those boys in. Yes. Um, but you know, the one thing Clarko said is if you take less and win together, you're going to be looked after post footy. Mm. And you know, if you you finish up and you go for a job and you've got a couple of premierships next to your name versus none, they're going to go with the bloke who's got premierships and that's what's happened to, for me anyway. 2015 specifically. Yep. Um, yes, like I said, I've put that to the back of my memory but we can discuss it for a little bit while you're in the house. Uh, are you... Okay, so so you, you lose in the qualifying final. Yep. Subiaco. Uh, you got to come back two weeks later and play Fremantle. You get that done. We were, I, I personally was just cheering for Fremantle because Hawthorne at the G, it's... And, you know, th- coming into your third crack at a grand final, fourth actually in a row. Um, an experienced side, yes, we'd beaten you, but you know, I don't know if we sort of thought that we would beat you at the G. Are you, when it, you get, do get through that week coming into the grand final, you, is that how you're thinking? Is um, the experience element and knowing how to get it done in a grand final, is that spoken about or just yeah. known through the playing group? Yeah, yeah. So uh, straight away we beat Frey. So we get an extra day on you. Because you had to play the Kangaroos on the Saturday yeah, night. I watched it, that's right. So Friday night we get to watch it. We get to come back. We're already home, so we know what happens. Um, you guys win. Um, then there's the Brownlow the Monday, I think. So the, a few of you guys have to do that in Perth. So it's, and it's, an, it's not a normal week for you guys. Yeah. Like we've experienced, we know what to do. We get to the parade. And one thing, in four parades, we never wore sunnies. And as soon as we saw you guys in sunnies, we're like, oh, I reckon we've got them here. Because they're just... Have you heard that? No. Please tell me more. No. Well, the, like... Well, 18, we didn't wear sunnies. Yeah, our rule in 18, Simo. no sunnies. Yeah. So, we were the same. Well, we had Simo was coaching 15 too. Yeah. Would have been nice of him to fucking tell us that 15. <laughs> if, that, is that, did, if that's so all did, the tool. We, I think we may have rocked up in... But this was just a small thing. Like, Clark, yeah. like I was like, look, in, look at people in the eye that have come to, out to see you in the parade. And I reckon Swans must have done it in, in 14 as well. Like, it's like the... You, you see him with sunnies and it's like, oh, we've... They're a bit confident, or they, they, you, Clarko made you feel as if they were confident. So, some people say the uh, the hands on the cup, like the two captains yeah. hold it up. Whoever the was last. their longest? Yeah. Have you said that one a couple of years ago? Coach yeah. And Tex? I've seen that. Um, but you blokes, who's wearing the sunnies? Yeah. Well, that was just one yeah. when we noticed, and it was like, oh, okay, yep. What about the actual game plan? Um, Johnny Wardrop came to our footy club post that and spoke a bit about. Um, I don't know how well you can remember back, but. You know, they had, you, had, you had a pretty distinct game plan of how to beat West Coast. We had a good back line at the time, yep. um, aerially. Yes. Um, but it was bring the ball to ground. Yes. You know, kick it along the ground if you need to. Yes. Um, you know, through the midfield, you know, Natanui, great ruckman. But, um, you know, effectively head your bets there and just nullify what happens there. Yep. Um, and then um, as your back line, you know, shut down Kennedy yep. and you get the win. If Kennedy doesn't kick... Two goals, West Coast don't win or something like that. Yep. So pretty much nail it? Yep. 
Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and then you executed it. Uh, yeah, well, you guys had implemented that Weagles web or whatever it was. It well, that was back I, mean, I know, it was, I know, that. but that was what yes. it was known as. So yeah. you guys would always start on the outside and centre bounces and wouldn't let us get to the outside. Yeah, so. can you tell me what the Weagles web was from a, an opposition? So what we'd notice is that centre bounces, you would always be on the outside of your forwards. Yep. So if the ball was kicked out of forty five, you were obviously on the outside first ones to get it. Yep. Whereas if it got kicked in, you could all swarm because you never know who was going to. Yep. Market because it was never directed at any one person. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I reckon we went in. There was it was a different because also too we'd played with four tools because we had Shuey, yeah, Gunners, sure, myself, um, Haley, and Big Boy. So you didn't really. I don't know if that was that threw you off as well because four tools wasn't something that you guys were no. accustomed to either. Usually people tried to go small. Correct. Yeah, and our smalls are pretty dangerous when you have Piopolo, Rioli, and Bruce. R- Rioli had a pretty good game. Rioli had not a bad game. <laughs> On for absolute fire. We'll go to the next one. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I mean, that was for us a motivator, and so that's why I asked about 2012 because in 2015, sat. I'm like, I still really does. I've only watched the game once or twice. Yeah, you know, a motivator for success, and the the win one, the lose one to win one isn't a thing. I don't no. think, but it does help yeah. because then 2018 we don't win. The, wear the sunglasses. Yeah, um, we were lucky though because 12 you don't like it doesn't hurt as much because we were able to get revenge two years later on the team that beat yes. us. Yes. So if you were able to come up against us and beat us, I reckon you'd say that 15 you'd be okay with. What about um, if you're happy talking about it, if you're not fine, 2016, nah. skin cancer. Yep. Um, that whole process, you miss a whole season. Yep. Which, I mean, brutal. You peak your powers. Yep. So what's that like to go through? Um, oh, you can't, you can't explain it in terms of for any person to go through but 15 um the lip was i had the cut on the lip and then 16 i was out with a pcl rico for the start of the year and then almost got back to, to get playing in may and then yeah had my second follow-up scan that had um so the four tumors were about the size of my thumbnail and there was two on each lung so um so that spread from melanoma is that yep. what happens yep Yep. So I would had radi- uh, didn't have radiation and i was given once i'd had my lip cut out and all the, all the different checks. I'd had lymph nodes cut out and whatnot. Nothing had spread. Didn't need radiation. Didn't need chemo. You're all good. So I play the back half of 15. I train up until Christmas. Um, I get married in January and then do all rehab. Think I'm going to play in a couple of weeks' time because it's Louis 250th. And then, yeah, just everything gets thrown on its head from there. Do so, you, Do you think, um, like, is it like mortality? Like no. Thoughts? No. No. Right. No. no. If you ask my wife, she she looked at Google, and can, that's the yeah, worst thing you can yeah. do. I can imagine your wife and yeah. family, and mum yeah. and dad, and whatever. But no, nah. so initially, footy instincts take over. It's a footy injury. How long have I got? You got eighteen months. All right, cool. Let's go. So if I got eighteen months, it means I've still got another year after that on a contract. So I'm still right to play there. <laughs> if I'm back in a little bit of time, I can get this amount of games. And so you just click into rehab mode. So, but this is a different type of rehab. You go into a hospital. You go and to get a treatment, there's only two people on in the hospital at the time because it was a trial. Um, in a sense, you're a bit of a guinea pig because no one else is on it, no one else is experiencing it. The, the other person was 70 plus, I'm 29. Um, so you're going through all these different side effects too. You're basically ringing the doc and the nurse every day saying, this has changed, that's changed. Right. I was like, the, the treatments were three weeks apart. So I had a gap in, the fir- in between the first two where I went to America to the 16 NBA finals. And got game five and seven, nice. which was like bucket list. That's number one. That's yes. always wanted to do that. Um, so we're there for that Kyrie shot against the Warriors. So that's and wow. I got that on film, which was pretty sick. Wow. Um, and then came back, and literally after the second treatment, I was in a hole. And then the third one, and then it took me three weeks to get right. Third one, hole again, and that's when they said, right, your body's full of the drug. So we're going to try and turn it back on itself. Um, and yeah, I was given. I was. I was. It's weird. You know the um, pred that you take as a player, five days. Yes. That dose is five days at fifty or something. I was on like two hundred to start for like wow. to try and get myself back to feeling normal because I'd walk laps at Waverley in the cold in a singlet and a shorts and people were like, what are you doing? I was like, I just need to feel like I'm alive because you're just in a hole. So yeah, when, I was, um, when you say in a hole, like what is that? What oh, is like no, body I, just I couldn't walk. Like I had. So the, the final um, side effect for me was pins and needles and frostbite in my feet. So I couldn't put shoes on. I couldn't walk from here to my car, like out the front of where you guys are now. I could just, I didn't have energy. And they'd say, just take Panadol. I was like, just take Panadol. Like, can't walk. Yeah, I can't. 
I can't move. I'm sweating at night. I'm, um, I got down to about 91. I played at 101, 102. So I just I had no energy and nothing. It was just – you were just flat. Yeah. So, um, And because I said, as before, you're on a trial, so it's they don't really know. Well, they do, but they don't. They're sort of waiting to see what happens Correct. a bit. Correct, yeah. Hoping. Like they they think they know what's going to happen, but yep. hasn't seen it. Yeah. So you, but you get through that yep. and then you, you be captain of the club. Yeah. So how, how does that work? Oh, no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I just you know go, how You go from thought. worrying about yourself because you have to, because yeah. there's no other choice with this, to then being captain and as a captain, you've got to put yourself at, behind everyone. Last. So you've got to do a, a complete 180 of your view of how you treat people, how you talk to people, how you look at everything. And I, I, I didn't get that anywhere near right because like, you're still – you're just transitioning from obviously what it was like. Because the last time I played was the 15 granny and the next one I played is at the start of 7-8. Yeah. Louis's gone, Mitch has gone, Hodgie's there, Hilly's gone. So it's, it's just different. And I'm still trying to think it's back to then and being able to talk to blokes and it just – yeah, you never got it right just maybe because you were holding on to maybe what was there. And not being yourself because you had a little C next to your name. So how, how often were you around the club in that in the time of rehab? As much as I could have been, because that was the only place I, f- <laughs> I was going through a Renault at home. So Sarah and I were living in a. Th- <laughs> so you were showering at the club, weren't you? Uh, we had no kitchen sink, so we're doing yeah dishes in the in the shower. So oh my god, <laughs> um, I was there as much as I could have been. So interstate trips, they the club would take me and stuff like that, just to because that was as normal as I could feel. Mm. in terms of just being around people um, that treated me normal. So is that sort of lead to captaincy, you think? Like um, just your presence around the club at nah, that time? No, definitely not. Nah. I just think, I think for me, um, it was my safe place, really. Um, it was the only place I could go without what I felt was like prying eyes. Oh, there's that bloke with, there's that footy player with cancer. Oh, there's that, you know. So you're a poster boy for something you don't want to be a poster boy for. But... At the same time, you know you give hope and strength to others as well. So you still have to put in perspective a little bit. So the captain side of things, um, you know, maybe I – well, Izzy was a pretty good candidate, so was Liam Shields. It wasn't as if that was just thrust upon me. It was – there was still the vote to go through and I was still – like they were doing background checks, asking Sarah, doctors, is it going to cause stress on him and all this kind of stuff. So it wasn't as if, yep, you're the man. So they did their homework. It doesn't sound like I mean you sound like you're being harsh on yourself. Like, do you think the captaincy was a good thing um, holistically? Don't know uh, for your well, footy. Probably. Uh, I don't know. We, we didn't. We wasn't successful. I've still got a fifty percent winning rate as captain. <laughs> <laughs> but was I the best of me? Probably not. No. So I probably wasn't good at times to be around just and then you're going through a whole different stuff and then Sarah gets pregnant so then that gets thrown on its oh head yeah. So oh yeah <laughs> then you're in there in real strife yeah so and that's not to blame her definitely not oh because absolutely that's, not. that's you know that's the best um, time of your life being a dad but yeah I probably changed as a person a little bit because you were captain flipping the coin did you, did you have any strategies as flipping the coin as captain heads, heads. always heads rough head always <laughs> oh, good. Oh, so I was like, it's like isn't it tails never fails nah I captained the club once and one from one. Oh, against Tails never fails. GWS. Did you captain the club or was it a milestone game where you got to flip the coin? GWS captain the club. Um, it was a uh, round two of the preseason cup, I believe. Oh. and we took uh, <laughs> and we took oh, 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 oh. and we took um, and we took. Uh, yeah, potentially I, I was the oldest there. Uh, yeah. We took just the absolute degrade, not degraders, but oh, no, Scoey was captain. Gave so. everyone a chance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everyone a taste of it. Yeah, and I played like absolute. I reckon I might like that. If, if I could have been subbed off, I probably would have been. I played like a dog. I was coming back from uh, injury or sickness or so something. So you had to play is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I was like given <laughs> they, the opportunity as captain. Say, yeah, like, they, yeah. It was Simo's way of sort of saying, you know, with, you know right, you're up and coming and leader and yeah. you know, here's your opportunity to lead. Did not lead. No, I did not lead well. What, um, what happens, um, how much of a difference is on game day from like not being a captain and captain? Are you thinking any differently? Or? Uh, well, uh, in tough... Or we, <laughs> Yes and no. I think when you th- when you're captain, you think you've got to do stuff, and when there's when the you know the games at a, a point where you think you've got to win, you feel at times like you've got to put yourself in the right position. Um, whereas you know when we were going through our good times, it was just like you don't worry about you know trying to be best on ground or trying to do th- you do the simple things and the the sim- the best you do the simple things well, and the best thing will be the win at the end of the day. Not you thinking I have to be Norm Smith or I have to kick six or I have to do this to be 
justified. If I do the simple things well, the best thing will be the win at the end of the game. Talking about keeping the group together, so you, you mentioned it before, as you come back as captain, all these blokes have moved on. You know, Hodge, Mitchell, yeah. Lewis, Isaac Smith to an extent, you know, you yep. know post that. Yep. They're all sort of guys that have transitioned out late in their careers. Um, how do you feel about that and, uh, and, and oh. not finishing their careers at Hawthorne? Yeah, look, as a footy fan, I didn't like it. Um, but as a teammate? Uh, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> but that's business. And towards the end of your footy career, I had the same, like Clarko said, the same thing to me. Do you want to be traded? And it was like, I was still captain at the time at the end of 18. And he comes to me with five. And I only did one hammy and it was that week after he asked me in my whole career. So stress or just really? thinking, Yeah, one hammy. Did it against the Bombers on the G and I was just like, why have I done this? And then I worked out the chat that week and everything like that. It was just like, yep, this is why. Right. So, um and I was 32 and after everything I'd been through a couple of years before, I was like, I don't, I don't want to go anywhere else. I'm, and, you know, did it cost me in the end because I got dropped to the twos? No, I don't think so. Um, I'm the only one at Hawthorne that got a send off. You know, none of the boys, uh, whether it be COVID or the boys that got traded, none of them got to say goodbye. Like they, had, did. they have laps of honour. They um, did one on the post. weekend. Strato, Louis, Birch and Poppy did one. Really? Yep. Do you find that interesting? Lap of honour? Is well, anything? yeah, I'm, I'm interested because you still haven't got yours. I was just wondering about that. Oh, um, well, he's working at Fox Footy, so uh, he can't... Uh, uh, well, I absolutely can. <laughs> you can just Mastin, do the boundary Ma- commentating. Maston Lewis the as well, car. Premiership players. I mean, I want to either... Anyway, Mastin's not that I'm bitter about it. Hey? Maston's a runner? Yeah, he is. They've brought him back. He's he's loving it too. Who was the other one? Did you say? Energy player. Lewis Jetta. Okay. More about the kids, actually. I'll, yeah, I'll, that's, I'll well, that's the photo that they got on the weekend. Correct. So, Hodge take, uh, sorry, Louis takes four boys, Poppy takes his girls, Strato girl and Birch boy. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's more me. I'm a footy fan, love footy, grand finals, watched them my whole life, played for one club, won a premiership with them. It was actually about my kids and yeah. doing that. But yeah. anyway, we'll with, um, we're going we're to start, we start getting through this. We've yes, actually got a special guest rolling into the um, One quick one, one on your last game. Yep. I watched the highlights before. Oh, yeah. Do you have many? Well, you, you said you can remember lots of details of games. Yep. The crowd's just gone crazy. Yeah, like so they weren't, gonna, they weren't going to open up level three if I didn't play. Wow. Because it was Gold Coast Hawthorne on a Sunday at 4.40. What? So I didn't get a clip on the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Gil. I did. I it. heard that. Yeah, so I got told if Ruff wasn't playing, because it is last game, we expect a lot of Hawthorne people coming. If you don't, we're probably going to... And they opened it. Yeah. And they packed it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's unreal. So yeah, the crowd were nuts. Yeah. yeah. 4.40 on a Sunday, you're thinking no one's going to come. Against Gold Coast. Yeah. What about post-career, mate? If I'm um, transitioning out, you're now with St Kilda Footy Club. Yep. Um, what's your role there? Um <laughs> I've, I, 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 have you got a business card? What, no, I don't, it? but I wish I did because it says football operations assistant. <laughs> football. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> football <laughs> operations assistant. Yeah. Who, so who's who's football operations? You're, Danny you're assisting Sexton. someone. You're Danny assisting Sexton. someone. Yeah, but it's a way I think before COVID times. Yes. That. Come on, in you come. Go and sit over there, please. Hello, Matthew. Matt Spanger just walked in, um, ladies and gentlemen. So before, right so it was. It was a jack of all trades, the jack thing. of all trades type thing. So coming in, I didn't really know what I want to do. Yes. Um, so you know, I didn't want to coach because if you sign a three year deal and you're assistant coach and hate it within six months, it's like, what? That's going to be a waste. Um, so help Max King, help forwards, help just learn the business, and then I've worked out in the three years list management is what I want to do. All right, list management. Yep. Come over to West Coast. Well, we have it's, it's open at the moment. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So well, there we go. I got Voz's number. And then a couple of <laughs> best mates living up north. And well, okay, we heard it here first. Well, you can list management. You can probably live in Victoria and just travel to Perth. <laughs> yeah, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Oh, I was just saying you could come over to Perth and we show yeah, you every show couple of weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. I'm very happy with I've that. Thought about it. Um, a couple <laughs> off me before we get to Scotia Media. Yes. Um, I'm just going to go straight with this one because this is just hot off the press. Um, you won a bed Saturday night one day. Um, you best on ground. They gave you know maybe in Sleepy's uh, bed giveaway. You made someone buy it. I am my brother. <laughs> yeah, he's going to earn his crust. Well, well, just give, you got it for free, <laughs> mate. If I t- uh, someone's told you this, which is good, if ca- if that's Cameron told you that, let's just look at the what outweighs what. And I was young at the time, and yes, I sold him a free one. I also asked him for a twenty dollars ticket when I bought him, took him to the wrestling when I was eighteen. The boys would have told you about that too. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the box, I was like, "Oh, you got that twenty for me?" <laughs> this isn't, but you got to remember, this is the same. I I roomed with my brother. Until I left home. So he was so 13, I was 17 when I left. So he's your younger brother? Yeah. So you made your younger brother buy Bloody a free bet. <laughs> Teaching him a lesson. 
nothing comes free. You're so staunch about it. And I love I love that you started getting on the front foot about it. Yeah, it was like, yeah, not, well, pay- when you said I've got people, before we even started, it's like, who's giving you mail? I was like, right, who, who would do I know? That, yeah, so that... That one's interesting, but yeah, next. <laughs> well, well no, nah, there's not many stitch ups. There's a couple more good ones, I think. Um, Oktoberfest, you've been to Oktoberfest? Yeah. You, you, you actually you actually took yeah you actually took on a an opposition player into the Oktoberfest. Josh Dunkley joined you on Oktoberfest. Oh yeah, is that correct? <laughs> he did, and Haw- then he, he, left, he left pretty quick. <laughs> he didn't last too long, did he? <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. half, a, half a day. We, yeah. <laughs> We, yeah, well, I wanted to get there before I turned 30 and got there at 30, so Good. I was in form. Yeah, he said he might have just been escorted out of maybe the Hofbrau town. Or he something. was, yes. yeah. Yeah, correct. Not you. It's <laughs> still <Yeah>. daylight. <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, uh, Charlie wanted to know this, apparently you're friends with Joe Ingalls and Patty Mills, yeah. true or false, he says. This is uh, from Charlie, by the way. True. Yeah, true. How does that work? Uh, yeah. Played juniors against them. Uh, so when Nationals in 02 in Adelaide, he Patty was obviously ACT, Joe was... Um, South Australia and then when Joe signed at the Dragons um, caught up a few times I think Dragons and Hawks had some mingling and then yeah he uh, when he'd come back from overseas and whatnot he'd dump all his bags at my house and then go do his training and whatever so um, friendships grew and then you know trips at the end of the year I'd head there and catch up and yeah could you have made it no I don't have a passport, so a lot of these boys, a lot of, a lot of no, um, as a basketballer, no, yeah. Well, no. So if you play in Europe, like Joe was able to on a British passport, you're not considered a local. Uh, you're not considered an import. You're considered a local, and all teams have two imports per side. Wow. So you know, so to be good in Europe, you've got to be really, really, really good. Right. Whereas he's playing as a local for these teams in Spain and Israel and. Whatnot. Wow. So not because so, he's really good. So that's why you see passport. a lot of these guys that stay in Australia, the really, really good ones like um, Goulding and um, even the boys in Perth, like Wagstaff and all those, they could have probably gone overseas and maybe played in second division. But if they had a dual citizenship somewhere, they probably could have made it in Europe. You say Israel, he played in Tel Aviv, didn't he? Played for Maccabi. So, so Matthew Spanger was in the house. Yeah. And I went to yeah. Israel on, yeah. on the back of your advice, I yeah. believe. And? and, and uh, oh, best ever. There you go. Great, greatest ever. <laughs> so Lucky to come home, to these people ask and say true or false and you've already got that info, it's like, it's true. It's just more for the <laughs> listeners, Jared. <laughs> I, do, I did know the answer. Right. Uh, we had um, Kath Lachlan in here and she uh, said, yeah. we do preparation and said, what, 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 what's one thing that people don't know about your role? And she said, I would think one per- pe- thing that you know, people don't know is uh, we do a lot of preparation for interviews we genuinely know, <coughs> generally know the answer to the question mm. that we're asking, but you just act a little gotcha. dumber. So I, I right. knew the answer. So you're learning stuff in your media career. Yeah, correct. But Last the, one. The podcast would be obsolete <coughs> if we just sat here going, yeah, we know everything. Then we go, all right, good. Okay. Move on. Smart ass. Um, <laughs> yeah, correct. Last one. <laughs> Who's the fines master at Hawthorne during your career? Did you have one? Was there? Uh, Spang, Osborne, um, Sicily probably now. Sicily. Yeah. He'd be the one now. He'd be the one you'd want in your back corner. Did you have anything to do with it? No. Nah, just sit up I was normally, I I'd start off because obviously when in number order or something else, it was like Jared Ruffhead, fines, uh, red hair, fair skin, freckles. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, <laughs> very good. Social media, we're up to it. I know that's what you're here for. I saw the tag today. Not, this not social, social. Right. right, this is where the people get to ask you the questions. Yep. Now, straight into it. Washed up underscore, wait, washed underscore up underscore pod. Okay. Oh, oh boy. You know these boys. Is it true your mates? Oh, these need boys. Yeah. They're, so they're, they're, yeah, okay. Sorry. No, no. Go on. Tell you yeah. sorry. No, they're, they're another podcast. Yep. Um, good lads. They're actually sponsored by Royal Limestone, um, who are a Perth-based company. Very good. Um, so up north, if you need some landscaping or um, some brickwork with limestone, they're your boys. Do you have any other anyone else you want to be plugging? Um, any St Kilda sponsors or? No, I'm okay. 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 Perfect. Yep. Tag you got a tag on there. Maybe tag you. Please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, is, it true, Sorry. Is, is it true your Sorry. mates need to put in paperwork at least two weeks before a visit? Yeah, it was when I was um, playing football that I would never let them all stay because they would all go out on the piss and Rowan, who's probably written that in, um, I found him asleep on my front porch one day. So I would never really allow my mates to stay because they would impact my performance. <laughs> so they have to say, hey, Ruffy, we're coming over and you had to approve them or not. And if not, I'd let them just work out. I'd say no and they'd go stay elsewhere. <laughs> That's very good. All right, Jeff, Jeff, uh, Jeff Tarwill. Um, if Mitchell offered you a position at Hawthorne next year, <laughs> would you take it? Uh, no, probably not at the moment. Because if the role I want would be list manager, which means I would have to sack all ex-teammates that I played with eventually, which would be quite hard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what Mitch said that was one of the hardest things he had to do. So, yeah, he, hasn't, he hasn't done it yet. No, correct. 
probably. He, he, did, he had to come in. He came in last year and he was sacking a few blokes. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, before he'd even started coaching, yeah. right? True. Adam Dot Rose. Uh, which teammate of yours always put in 110% effort day in and First out? First of all, this isn't the thing. 110% effort. But who's, who's, the, who's, the effort, who's the effort guy at Hawthorne? Oh, Piopolo was probably the one. Yes. He, you know, it was unfortunate he didn't get to 200 games, but 196 from where he came from, driving backos in Perth, um, he's done quite well. Yeah, that is good. But he, he just just say no, I was 194. He's still a member of the 200 club because they include pre-season games, so he still gets his two tickets. So don't worry too much about it. Only him. one to the granny, though, yeah? <laughs> How many do you get? A stand? Two. Level three? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah asked me that one day because we were talking about this and she's like, what happens when they get enough people to fill the Jeep? With I was like, duh, there's only been 14,000 people to ever play AFL. And then if you dwindle that down to about 1,000 that have ever played 200, I reckon we're okay. <laughs> she was worried about the Jeep getting packed out with <laughs> of people players. taking 200 tickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to leave this one to last. Okay. We'll do two, two more. No, the last one's a bit rough. Uh, Sack Jamble. Uh, opinion on the Tassie AFL team concept should uh, should have it ha- have happened already. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it should have happened already because we had quite success down there as a footy club with Hawthorne. So um, look, eventually it might get there. I they've got good both good grounds. I haven't played at Blundstone, but they've got two pretty cool stadiums that are good for footy. I don't know if there's, there's enough talent to get a 19th team in, but if they're going to do it, they'll pull the trigger soon. Maybe you could be list manager down there under Clark. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Last one, Josh is JK it, yeah. seventeen. So, does this have anything to do with a world champion boxer? Let, well, let me ask the question. <laughs> um, have you nearly got into a fight yeah. with Costa uh, Zoo? Costa Zoo. Yeah. Oh well, no, not me personally. Oh well, yeah. Tell us the story, please. So, uh, Sixteen years old. Uh, we're all at the AAS, the group of us. So there's myself in that year. There's me, Bud, uh, Delidio, JK. Uh, Mitch Morton um, Mitch So 16 year old boys At the AS You just stay up Late at night yes. You know We see Yana Pittman She's training with a few people um, We get told 10 or 11 o'clock You know The rowers are going to be up early Can you just Tone it down a bit Oh yeah yeah Rowers <laughs> <laughs> Rowers this <laughs> Gets about midnight um, We're all Mucking around 16 year old boys In walks Koshy Zoo Into your room Into our room Gold chain Swinging it like this well, it looks at us. Did you know who he was? Yeah. <laughs> so, world Championship officer. I give you two minutes to get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. No worries. <laughs> Everyone jumps in bed, right? And I reckon I'm in the room with JK. Anyway, like, creak in the wall, like, chair like this. Oh, it's him. <laughs> it's him. Shh. So we're all shitting ourselves, right? <laughs> I reckon it got to one o'clock. Terry Wheeler next morning. You've put a fucking world champion onto me. What are you boys doing? It's like, I didn't mean it. Like, we're kids, right? <laughs> Ryan Jackson goes to get a signature the next day. Kostya, he was, we said, what's, why? He's, like, oh, he's up at four. He's doing push-ups on his knuckles on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this bloke. Anyway, one of the boys, I don't know who it was. Hope Hatton knocks you out. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, all 30 of us are trying to apologise and someone at the back. Hope Pat knocks you out. <laughs> <laughs> it was right, but that's mate. Well, jo- Josh tells the story that you 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 tried to fight him oh. when he came in. <laughs> Would I? No, no. no. <laughs> that mate, literally, like I give you two minutes. <laughs> yeah, mate, no worries. <laughs> I'm off to bed. <laughs> there, <laughs> takes the well. That's when he walked in, and it's like we're all sitting there, and oh, someone saw him first, and like as you turn around, it's like <gasps> <laughs> you're just like. What am I doing? Oh, that's unreal. Uh, I think that's a good place to end the pod. Appreciate your time today, Ruffy. No worries. Um, Been outstanding. Thank you, mate. Well done, guys. There we go. All done and dusted. Back chat, double underscore on socials. Before we go. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ruff, we got something for you. (laughs) Now, assuming you're a double XL here, mate. We got... (laughs) Look at this. Assuming. Yeah. Well, I'm a double double XL. Okay. Okay. Happy now. I'm just a medium. Yeah, mate. Back chat merch. Fantastic. Look at this. Hey? Yeah, hey. I'll rock that. Have we go. There Thank we go. You. Have that one. Yes. And what else have we got down here? We'll we give it later, but there's a whole box of merch for, we would like if possible, we have Backman merch. Oh, yeah. So you know Backman. Oh, so you want me to give it to all the defenders? <clears throat> Not all of them. Just just the ones that... Just <laughs> the ones... Beers. Just the ones that you know <clears throat> are the, 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 the grumpy ones. The ones that are the Backman. Right. Some, some guys play through the back line and... 
they'll be in the midfield soon. Yeah, skillful players. We want the backman. Right. Right. So we got um, we got backs only t shirts. We've got um, uh, forwards uh, sign uh, uh, forwards sign be memberships. Be careful about that one. F- forwards sell memberships. <laughs> Mids sell sponsorships. Backs win premierships. Yep. Right. So you, you, you haven't had many of those ones, or you haven't repeated that often. Have you? It, it was the midfield's fault. Yeah. You got that <laughs> as well. I've heard you say that. <laughs> okay. Very good. So we're going to get those to the St Kilda boys. <coughs> right. So thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. If anyone wants any of that merch, by the way, where backchat, do you find it? Backchatpodcast.com.au <laughs> forward slash merch. Thanks to our supporters and our, our sponsors: Shelter, uh, Whippersnapper Distillery, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet. Yeah, well done. Blue bet. And of course, Ladable Cameras. We love you. If you want to find anything, you want to listen, you want to watch, backchatpodcast.com.au. See you next week.